and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to be creating a simple cipher in Python. If you don't know what a cipher is, it is essentially a secret code that you can use to write a message in secret writing. So for example, maybe when you were younger, you and your friend or a sibling created a secret language that only the two of you could understand. That way, you can send messages back and forth, and if anyone else were, try were to try to read it, they wouldn't understand it. So today we're gonna to be creating a program that will take in a message in regular English and encrypt it so that it's in a secret text that only someone knowing who knows what the secret code is would be able to understand. So this project is gonna be using for loops, string indexing and string concatenation. So if you haven't learned about those three concepts before, check out the videos on our channels that cover it first and then come back and work on, work on this project with me. The language that we're going to be using to encrypt our secret messages is called ASCII, and it is a message. It is a language where every letter and character that we use is represented by a single number. Let me show you what I mean. Here is the ASCII chart. The two columns I want you to pay attention to are the decimal column and the character column. Essentially, the computer, when it's processing anything that we type into a form or an input field, the computer actually recognizes all of our input as these numbers. So for example, a capital A is represented by the number 65, a lowercase a is represented by the number 97, and even the space key is represented by the number 32. So you can see that we have numbers, letters, characters, and even some of the buttons that exist on our keyboard represented by this decimal number. So when we're going to be writing our secret message, let's say that we want to say hello. Instead of saying H-E-L-L-O, our message will show up as H represented by 104, E represented by 101, L represented by 108, so two L's, 108 two times, and then O represented by 111. If you were to send these numbers to a friend, would they understand what you're talking about? Probably not, unless you gave them this table, in which case they'd be able to decrypt your secret message. So now that we know what ASCII is and how we're going to be using it to encrypt our message, let's learn how to convert letters into ASCII representation and ASCII back into letter regular character representation. So as you can see here, I have a, a blank project open. All I've done so far is create a title for my project and left a, I left myself a little note about the two commands that we're gonna be using to convert our characters. So let's see how these two commands work first before we get into the project. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this ORD command to convert a character into ASCII. So ORD takes in a singular letter. So for example, A, and we'll convert it into its ASCII representation. So let's go ahead and print this to the screen just to see how it works. So here we go, we get the number 97. And if we go back to our ASCII chart, we'll see that 97 is indeed the number that represents A. So that's how you can use ORD to convert um, characters into ASCII. Now let's take a look at this second command. This command converts ASCII back into a character. So this time we're gonna say cr and then we're gonna give in a number. So the number again is what is the ASCII representation of our characters. So let's try uh, 115 and see what we get. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a print statement around this and let's try running it. So we got the letter S and once again, if we look at our chart, we'll see that S is represented by 115. So we figured out how to convert these characters into ASCII and ASCII back into the characters. All right, so now let's get started with our project. The very first thing we need to do is ask the user for their message. So I'm gonna use the input function to do this, and then I'm gonna store whatever the user says inside of a variable called message. So let's go ahead and type message is equal to input parentheses, and then the message that we want to give our user. So I'm gonna say, please, enter your message. Let's say your secret message. So this is gonna be the message that we want to convert into ASCII. So how are we gonna be able to do this? So let's first try running this and seeing if it works. I'm gonna go ahead and just print message out into the console. So please enter your secret message. Let's just say hello for now. And notice we get hello back at us. So we want to do this in baby steps. So how can we first get into this word hello and change this first letter into its ASCII representation? Well, 
the easiest way would seem to just pass in all of hello into the ORD function, right? So what up, what happens if we just say ORD of message? Will that change everything into ASCII? Let's see. So I'm gonna write hello. And notice this is the error we get. So type error, ORD was expected a character, but string of length five was found. So what this is essentially saying is that this um, command actually cannot take in full strings. It can only take in a string of one character. So we unfortunately cannot just put the entire message. We're gonna have to go through and do each letter of our message one at a time. So let's first just try to get this H, um, this H out of the way. First, how can we get the, how can we access and go into this word and get that letter H? We can use string indexing to do this. So we're gonna type in message, which is the string that we wanna index to. We're gonna follow it up with a square bracket and then we're gonna give the index. So remember that indices always start from zero, not one. So H is actually at an index of zero and E is at an index of one. So we're gonna put in zero to get H in um, the H of our string. And I'm going to go ahead and print this out to see if this indeed gets us the letter H. So I'm going to say hello. And there we go. We got the letter H. So now what can we do to change H into its ASCII representation? We can simply put ORD around this entire message index at O. So I'm going to say ORD message of O. Hello. And we get 104. And if we check, we'll see that H is indeed 104. Okay, so we figured out how to change one. We figured out how to get into our word, get the letter that we need, and convert that letter into its ASCII representation. So how can we now go through and get, convert every letter of our string into, um, into its ASCII representation? To do this, we're going to use a for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and create a couple lines here. And let's create a for loop. So I'm going to say there are several ways that we can do this. So I'll show you. Um, I'll show you two different ways. The first way we can just say for i in message. So what does this mean? Let's see what i represents. So I'm just going to go ahead and print out i, and let's see what we get. Let me comment this one out, and we'll say hello. And notice that we get each letter of our word one by one at a time in our console. So I represents each letter of our word. So these are the letters. So how can we go about and converting it into ASCII? All we have to do is put ORD all around it. Like that. So now let's try this. And here we go. We got 104, 101, 108, 108, 111. And you can go ahead and check the chart to see if this is the right input. Now. We don't actually want to print out each letter one at a time. We want to create a string of these letters and we want them to have um, to show these numbers with spaces in between. So how can we go about doing that? Well, we can use string concatenation. And similarly to how we use the plus equal sign, plus equal operator to increase values of like an integer, for example, we can actually use this as well to create, um, to do string concatenation. So let me show you what I mean. First, I'm going to create um, a new variable, and I'm going to call this new message. So this is our um, converted message, our converted secret message. And for now, all I'm going to do is store an empty string. So what I mean by empty string is that I'm just going to put the two quotation marks, and I'm not going to put anything else inside. What I want to do is rather than printing each of these letters to the console, I want to add this that this number to our string. So to do that, I'm going to remove our print statement. And instead, I'm going to say new message plus equal for of i. So what we're doing here is that each time you go into the for loop, whatever i is, in this case, i is every letter of our word hello, we're going to convert i into its ASCII representation, and then we're going to add that number into our string. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to say hello. And we get an error message. So what do we get? We got type error can only concatenate string, not integer to a string. And it's referring to line nine, which is this one right here. So what went wrong here? Again, we're doing string concatenation. What do we get when we convert our letters into an ASCII representation? We get an integer, which you cannot concatenate to a string. So what do we need to do? We need to first convert this, this um, number into a string so that it looks something like, um, 111 like this, 
versus just the number 111, which is an integer type when it doesn't have the quotes around it. So how can we do that? We can just put the string command around this, this um, number. So let's try this now. So we're gonna say hello and nothing happened. Why? Because we never actually printed out our new message. So let's go ahead and print out our new message. Okay, now let's try again. Hello. And there we go. We have all of our numbers. But right now, it kind of looks like a jumbled mess, and you can't really tell where each number starts and which number ends. So we want a space to be added um, in between each one. Any guesses on how we can do this? We can actually just add our string with a space at the end. So we can literally say plus, and then instead of an empty string, I'm going to go ahead and put a space here. So now if we run this again, I put hello, then we get our, the numbers that we were looking for all as a string. So here is our encrypted message. Okay, so now we're gonna take this project one step forward. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a secret key. This key is going to shift all of these numbers up or down a certain amount to make our message a little bit more encrypted. So this would only work if you can only decode this message if you know what the key is. So you would save this secret key. Let's say that you wanna send a friend a message. You would agree on a secret key in advance, let's say five. And then instead of just putting these numbers, you're gonna add five to these numbers. So we're gonna, instead of 104, 101, 108, we're gonna get 109, uh, 106, etc. So that way it makes it a little bit harder. And if someone knew that you're using ASCII, for example, they'd have to put in a little bit more effort to figure out exactly what, um, how, what your message originally was, because they're gonna have to do some math and do some shifting up and down in the alphabet. So rather than add on to this, to this what we have so far, I'm gonna go ahead and create another project so that I can show a different way of doing this for loop. All right, so we're going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to start with the same type kind of thing that we have up here. So once again, message is going to ask input. Oops. Please enter the message you wish to encrypt. And this time, I'm also going to ask them for the key. So I'm going to create a variable called key. And I'm going to say, please enter the key you wish to use. So again, this second variable is going to store some type of number that we're going to shift these things up by. So now, doing the same thing, we're going to want to go through this message, hello, and go through, get to the H, right? figure out what that number is in ASCII, and then apply the key to that number before adding it to our new message. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same one, new message, and I'm gonna store an empty string like that. Okay, so let's see this other for loop that you can use. Rather than going in and representing each character with I, what we can do is we can use range. So I'm gonna write for I in range, and the range function gives us a list of um, numbers starting from starting from zero up to whatever you want. So in this case, we want to go the entire length of the message. And this message can be different lengths. Maybe I say hello friend the first time, and then maybe I say uh, hello enemy the second time, right? Those two, those two strings will have different lengths. So we can't put in a specific number like five, for example. So how can we figure out um, how many characters we're going to have in our string? We can use the length function for this. So I'm going to say start from zero and then go up to however many characters there are in our string. So I'm going to say length of message. So now I'm going to go ahead and print I to see what is rep what I represents in this for loop. So let's go ahead and say hello. And there's our original one. And now this time I'm also gonna say hello again. And I can see that there's not a lot of space. So I should have put a colon in the space here, but I'm gonna continue with this for now. Hello. And then the key I wish to use, let's say seven. Okay, what did we get? We got the indices of, of each letter of our string. 
So rather than getting the H-E-L-L-O, we got the index of each letter of our string. So how can we use that to help us do what we were trying to do before? Well, similarly to what we did before, we're going to index into our word hello using I as our key. So what I mean by that is what happens if we say message index at I? Let's see what we get. Hello, there's our original one. And let's say hello again. And this time I'm going to give it a key of seven. And now we got all of the letters of our word. So now what do we need to do? We need to convert these into ASCII. So what can we do? We can do the same thing as before where we put ORD around the entire thing. And what do we get? Let me actually go ahead and comment this out so it doesn't keep repeating. There we go. And I'll start this. Okay. Hello. Seven, which does nothing right now. And there we go. We got the same numbers that we saw before for hello. But what did we want to do this time? This time, we didn't want to just add these numbers. We want to add our key to our number. So how can we do that? Well, we can simply just add our add the key to the number using the plus sign. So I'm going to find the place. So this entire thing is right here. I'm going to do plus seven. Let's, so let's see if this works. So the first number that we get, we should get 111. Let's see if we do. Hello, seven. And there we go. We got 111. I'm going to try it again and try another number. Hello, and then three. And oh, no, what happened here? We should have gotten 104 plus three, which is 107. So what happened? Well, I actually put in the number seven into this print statement instead of the key that we had asked for. So um, instead of writing seven, I'm going to go right ahead and write key. Okay, so now let's see if this works. Please enter the message you to encrypt. Hello. And then seven. Okay, we get an error message. Type error, unsupported operand type for plus, int and string. What int and string are they talking about? Well, remember that the input function always gives us a, a string type. Even if we put in a number into this input form field, we're going to get seven like this versus seven like this. So what we need to do is we need to convert this key into an integer type first so that we can add it to this number. How can we do that? We can do it several ways. We can either do the key here or we can do the key here. And since we're going to be adding it anyways, let's go ahead and put the int function around our input over here. So automatically key is going to be a number type. So let's try that. Let's say hello. We're gonna say seven. And there we go. We got 111, 108. And if I try again and do three, we should get different numbers. So hello and three. Nice. Now we get 107 like we were expecting. So now what can we do? We can add all of this into our new message string. So let's say new message plus equal this new thing. And all of this is going to be the string. And just like or the, the um, converted ASCII number. And then just like before, we're going to want to add a space. But let's first try this and say if it works. Seven. OK, what happened? Once again, we can't, now all of this is a number, right? So we need all of this to be a string. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a string type around all of this and try it now. So hello, seven. And what did we forget to do again? We forgot to print out our final message. So let's go ahead and say new message, but it's great that we haven't gotten, we didn't get any errors. So let's try again, hello and seven and there we go so now we can go ahead and also add that space now that we know this works and we should get our final super super secure encrypted message let's see there we go let's see what happens if i type in a longer string like hello friend so hello friend what do we get let's try five this time so let's see we get, we have five. So you can see that all of these numbers were gold up by five. So this should be H-E-L-L-O 
and then off f r i e n d hmm it seems like we have an extra an extra number any guesses why that's because space is actually a character so if we think of it it's h e l l o 37 which is the space and then the rest of our word friend f r i e n d so let's check to see if 37 is indeed space and we'll see here that 37, if we minus five, because we added a key to it, you get 32, which is our space key. So there you go. You have a program that can convert any message that you give it into a secret message using ASCII. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed working on this project with me. If you want some more practice doing these type of things, I recommend creating an extension to this project where you take in a secret message and convert it back to its original message. That way you can practice converting things from ASCII back into the original um, character representation. In the next video, we're actually gonna be working on a Caesar cipher, which takes everything that we did in this video one step further to make an even more encrypted message. So if you're interested in that, go check out that video next. Until then, see you next time.